Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, I just watched or finished watching uh, the first Terminator movie today for the, I don't know, I don't feel like I've seen it all the way through. I remember like 10, 20 years ago, it was on cable all the time, so I was always catching little bits of it. Somehow I always caught the end of it though. Uh, but right now it's on Netflix, so I just watched it all the way through. And I've got to say, I'm not like the biggest Terminator franchise fan. I mean, I was like a teenager when Terminator 2 came out and I saw that in the theaters and then like a million times on uh, VHS. But uh, I, I don't know, like I've seen all of them, I think. I just finally uh, saw Terminator Salvation like a couple months ago, even though that came out like 10 years ago. But yeah, I've seen all of them. I don't really care, I think time travel stories are generally trash and then like the terminators don't they just don't make sense on like 20 different levels and i know you just have to go with it but uh it's something that i'm not interested in in the first place so go with it usually implies that you already like it and you're willing to look over some things uh so anything anyway um uh, i watched it and finished it today and uh i loved it I absolutely loved it. I loved pretty much every single <coughs> second of it. And one of the things I kept thinking is that this movie is so simple. It's one of the most simple movies I've ever seen. Now on my other channel, I talk about comics and I'm making comics right now. And one of the things I've learned over having some two fairly major releases uh, last year is, and I don't want to sound condescending. Please tell me if I'm sounding condescending. but. You would be shocked at the things that can confuse a person. Now, I get confused all the time when I'm reviewing comics and people say, oh, you missed this. They said this on page six, you missed it. Well, the thing is, very few people are gonna take your creation as seriously as you do. You have to imagine that they've got a career, they've got a family, they can, I don't know, argue with the wife or something. Like, their whole mind is not on your movie, comic, TV show, whatever. So you gotta keep it really really simple i often joke with my buddy that if i were to invent the snickers bar for the first time if it, if it had never existed and i sold it to whatever hershey's whoever makes the snickers bar i would sell the name of the snickers bar as snickers the candy bar that would be its full name you would say Snickers the candy bar because people are going to say, what is this? Is, is it a power bar? Is it a trail mix? No, no, it's Snickers the candy bar. So one of the things I've really learned because I'm doing sequels to both my books from last year is I say, take that out, put this in. People are going to get confused. Like if somebody is chained to a pipe, you need to see the chain go from their wrist to the pipe and it needs to be like in the middle of the panel. It can't be at the bottom of the panel, it can't be at the top side, it needs to be like right there. So one of the things I kept thinking is like, everything in this movie is so simple and everything is in this movie is so clear. And it, it seems almost counterintuitive because you would think having things be really, really simple, like C-spot run, freaking Sesame Street simple, but it actually really, really drew me in. I didn't miss anything. I was very invested in it. It tells a very lean story with just a couple of people. You could almost do this as like a off-Broadway play <laughs> with a really, really uh, small stage. Uh, there's, you know, there's the Terminator, there's Sarah Connor, there's Kyle Reese, there's the lead detective, the second lead detective, the psychiatrist. That's about it. <laughs> That's pretty much it in the whole movie. It's a very, very simple movie. So everyone knows the story. Uh, th there's a nuclear war. Skynet takes over. The Terminators are trying to exterminate mankind. Uh, there's a hero, John Connor. So the uh, Terminators send the T-1000, whatever, the, the fr Arnold. They send, they send Arnold back, and then he's supposed to kill Sarah Connor. Uh, so what we get is a very, very simple movie. I, I, when I was like 30 minutes in, I was explaining how simple it was to my buddy and he kept laughing. I go, you don't understand. Uh, Arnold comes to Earth and he lands at, I believe, the Griffith Observatory. It, it like They even say the time. They say it's like 1.30 in the morning. 
inexplicably, there is a garbage truck for someone to witness him arriving and get scared, so you know he's scary. Then, by an amazing coincidence, way up at the Griffith Observatory, uh, Los Angeles natives, please let me know if I'm using the wrong landmark, there's three punks. Three punks that immediately try to attack him, giving an, ex uh, uh, an excuse for him to show his strength and speed. And then amazingly, they also have cool clothes for him to take. Kyle Reese uh, lands on Earth. There is immediately a bum there. He gets his pants apparently just by pulling them off of him. Like they show him naked, they show the bum who doesn't seem to notice that he's naked. The next scene he has pants on, the bum says, he took my pants. I'm like, that almost deserves a scene right there. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then he runs away. Where does he run to? He runs to a random door. Mind you, he's naked except for a pair of pants. What does the door lead to? A department store. There's a chain on the department store door. What happens? Oh, he pushes it. Now you might think, oh, he's gonna run back 10 feet, get a head start, run, and he's gonna either like freaking kick it with all his strength or he's gonna, no, no, no. He just pushes on the door a little bit harder. He then goes inside and he's being chased by three cops. He then has a chance to basically completely dress himself. He even has a chance to hold shoes up to his feet to see if they will fit. He then escapes fairly, oh, I forgot. At one point a cop grabs him, he's like, you're under arrest, uh, and then he just takes the gun. In a very, very, very simple, you know, uh, a reversal of fortune. I mean, it's not any kind of complicated martial arts move. He just is literally like, your gun in your hand, your gun in my hand. Hey, wow, that was pretty easy. Um, so then uh, we start setting up that the, um, the Terminator is searching for Sarah Connor, but the records are gone because of the war. So how do you find Sarah Connor? Well, Kyle Reese goes to the phone book and then so does, so does Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like it's so, so simple. Uh, the other thing that I forgot about, because I remember seeing it, whatever, as a, as a teen and thinking it was really intense. And the weird thing is it only really gets intense like at the end. Uh, most of it is this kind of like almost like an action comedy scene. There's like Sarah Connor and her, uh, you know, her roommate and they're silly and they dance around and they listen to headphones. Um, and you're just like, w when does this get scary? It almost feels like it's like a comedy. Uh, but again, everything's really, really lean. They're saving almost all of their money for the end of the movie. So they're just kind of trying to make it light, some light cheap and easy and then they're gonna spend half their budget in the last 30 minutes so once they get to the end they set up oh my god I, I gotta tell you so I've always liked Michael Bean he's just like a cool actor he was like the cool guy in the, in the Abyss, Navy Seals, uh, uh, Terminator, uh, uh, Tombstone he was like that cool guy from the late 80s to mid 90s I never noticed he's a skinny guy I never noticed how much heavy lifting he was doing in this movie. He's freaking everything. First of all, he's an exposition machine. Machine. He explains every single part of the premise of the, of the story to Sarah Connor. Then, he, I forgot that he was in multiple scenes set in the future. I remember Terminator 2 as the, the movie that really showed the future, and it was just barely in Terminator 1. No, I'm completely wrong. There's like three or four scenes. He's the main focus of that. He's the exposition machine. He's the main hero of most of the movie until Sarah Connor takes over in like the last 10 minutes. And then he also has to be the love interest and convincingly um, uh, meet, fall in love, and get uh, Sarah Connor pregnant. And she even tells her son later. I kind of assumed it was a couple days. She points out that they knew each other literally for a few hours. I was like, wow. Now I know Michael Bean was like a big deal, or a pretty big deal, at least in like sci-fi circles. I can't believe he didn't become like, I don't know, like a Brad Pitt style leading man. Like he is so good. The other thing I noticed, you know, um, Arnold's there and he's in great shape. Honestly, I don't think Arnold's that great. He's in great shape, but he's not that great. His acting is terrible. I know that everyone's like, ha ha, he's so robot robotic. He's perfect to play a robot. No, he never acts like a robot. When he falls down, 
he falls down like a person who's bothered that they fell down. Like when he shoots guns, he's as accurate as a person. You would think a Terminator, you know, Kyle Reese is like driving by on a in a car. Terminators are just like shooting with one hand. At one point, he actually sh- like shoots with two hands. He still misses everything. These people have the accuracy of like bad guys in Starsky and Hutch, and he's a freaking robot. At one point, he uh, gets into an 18 wheeler, 16 wheeler, a truck, semi truck. No wait, yeah. And uh, you see that he like. Uh, calls up how to shift gears or was it called double clutching or whatever and I was like wait you got the data on how to drive a, a semi truck but uh, you don't know how to aim a gun <laughs> like really now yeah I know the, the story would have been really really uh, done very quickly but actually they get away with that a couple times there's one point where the Terminators go into this club called Tech Noir and then Uh, Sarah Connor's all nervous. He's looking for her, but she drops something on the floor and she bends to pick it over Pick it up right as he's walking by. I was like, that's slick You should have been more stuff like that and not just a Terminator a machine missing like with 99% of the bullets Um, uh, uh, There's another bit where the psychiatrist who I didn't even remember him being in the first movie uh, from the second movie in the insane asylum or uh, he uh, he just barely missed being murdered by uh, the Terminator because he's heading out to his car. He's like, ah, it's late. I'm leaving. Um, uh, but besides that, it's just good. Uh, uh, Linda something? I just worked out and I'm a little tired and I'm fasting. Linda? Sarah Connor, actress. Um, really, really good. She's another one. I know she had a steady career all through the 80s and 90s. I, I haven't seen her anything lately. I'm kind of surprised she didn't become like a bigger actress and like, you know, all, remember all the the serial killer movies became so popular, like freaking million of them in the 1990s. I'm surprised she wasn't more in those. She's really, really good and she's beautiful. I forgot how beautiful she is. She's absolutely stunning. Um, so uh, besides that, yeah, it's just good. I like, uh, very, very dramatic, very well done. I, I know, I know people said this is low-ish budget. I don't think it was that low. You know, there's some good special effects. The special effects mostly hold up. There's just a couple, like, there's a bit where they're, like, closing a door and the Terminator, like, the stop-motion Terminator's running up toward them. You're like, mm, I'll let that one slide. Uh, but just a fun, fantastic movie. I really enjoyed it. Go check it out. It's, it's even if you think you've seen it, but you're like, I haven't seen it for, like, 20 years. And I just saw it on cable. I would give it a watch. It really holds up fantastically well and I just kept comparing it to like movies now I'm like oh gosh it wouldn't be one Terminator it'd be 20 and it'd be 10 different styles and like he wouldn't just chase him oh oh before I go the other thing that I noticed is Terminator 2 is almost a soft reboot of the franchise like you can tell he had all these big plans for things and then he didn't quite think that he pulled them off So he started, like, he liked the idea, you know, there's a good point of this where um, Arnold is driving around in a police car. Now, he's not dressed as a policeman, but over the radio, he impersonates this policeman he killed. So, you know, he got in his head, hey, it's really cool for a Terminator to impersonate a policeman because then he can have weapons in public and nobody makes a big deal. And then there's other bits like, oh, I want him to get chased by a a semi-trailer, but in this movie, it's like a really, really slow chase, and it's not actually that Nothing really happens on that chase. Uh, Or no, uh, Kyle Reese does get uh, shot, but it's like a stray bullet, effectively. Um, So then he's like, oh, I want to do it a lot better than the second one, but I want it to be daylight and be like in this reservoir or the flood canals or whatever. And it's like a kid on a little little motocross bike. I was like, yeah, that's cool. There was a couple other things where I was like, he totally redid that. Oh, yeah. He's like, yeah, I like killing the Terminator in a factory, but like this, this, this press, it's not as dramatic as I thought it'd be. It'd be better if it was like molten steel, all that type of stuff. Honestly, though, I thought that the future fight scenes in one were better than, I think it's just one scene they have in the, in the theatrical release. And it's just, just John Connor in a command center. It's not that big of a deal. Anyway, so that's it. Uh, it's definitely a recommend, and if you say, ah, I saw that a million times, well, ask yourself, 
when's the last time you saw it? Because uh, the world has changed. <laughs> you couldn't make a movie like this. People would say it's too simple. Like, we need 10 Terminators. Uh, uh, we need uh, a male Terminator, female Terminator. We need one to transform into a car. We need one to fly. It's like, no, you couldn't just do this real simple story. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, uh, my video tomorrow is going to be the season finale of Arrow season seven. I'm halfway through it right now and it's terrible. Well, thanks for watching. Bye.